You know what I'm saying? This is how we're supposed to look like in the church. We're supposed to, once we learn that word and learn who he is, that's why the church is a hospital. Because once we get to the place, especially with us as leaders, now we got to go and show it to the people in the congregation how to walk and how to live in the realm of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Let me get you to turn to Romans 10. Because we're going to dissect this word. Because when you leave here, you're going to understand. You're going to know how to walk in the realm of the spirit. We're going to be reading this out of the um, New Living Translation Bible. When you look at Romans 10, look at verse 2. He says, I know what, he said, I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. So even in this text, he's talking about the brothers and the sisters. And he said about the longing of my heart and my prayers for God's people of Israel to be saved. He said, I know that they have the enthusiasm. He said, but it's being misdirected. He said, this zeal, he said, because they thinking that it's in their worship. They thinking that it's in their prayer. And it's a misdirected zeal thinking, this is what's making me righteous with God. And he's saying, that's not it. Yeah, sometimes we think we can, we righteous just because we read our Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We righteous just because we go to church. We righteous just because we worship. And that don't make you necessarily righteous. It's some more components. And see, sometimes we got to let go of that religious mindset. Because if you're going to live in the realm of the spirit, you can't think just because you go to church, read your Bible, you worship, that you're righteous. That don't make you righteous. You can be religious doing that and don't even know who God is. It's the relationship with him that makes you righteous. Because you got to understand that even as you go on, God, because God began to share with me, we can't serve God the way we want. It has to be his way. You know, sometimes when we say, well, I just pray two times a day. And then I worship three times a week. <coughs> You know, that'd that be our own little formula, what we saying in the, in the Bible, in Psalms 1, say meditate on the word of God, what? Day and night. But you see how we'll get caught up in our own little formula, and just because you see somebody else who ain't doing what you're doing, it'll make you think that you're righteous. Exactly. It don't mean you're righteous. Because to your own standard, you have said you're righteous, and that's what he was saying here. That the people was misguided. They was misdirected. He said, for they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. He said, they refuse to accept God's way. They cling to their own way of getting right by God, with God, by trying to keep the law. In other words, they try to keep rules. And God said, even to live in the spirit, living in the spirit by keeping rules is not making you righteous. He said, because here, because man try to make himself or himself righteous by doing what he want to do, by doing good deeds, by reading the Bible, by using human effort. Human effort don't make you righteous. So I'm trying to show us, to look at us, what we do, because we got to understand it takes his spirit, because if the truth really be told, then flesh get tired. Flesh don't want to read the Bible. The flesh don't want to worship. The flesh don't want to pray. See, human effort get tired. But see, Holy Spirit said, I want to show you, you need to live by my spirit in order to get what you need to get out of worship, in order to get what you need to get out of prayer, in order to get what you need to get. Even with coming to church, it's going to take his spirit. Because if not, it's a waste of your time. That's why you'll see some people walk in and walk out the same way. Walk in and walk out. Because in their own mind, it's a form of righteousness. But they don't have his spirit. Pastor Rick. And it's the spirit. church people. Or you see some people. Well, I've been in church for 30 years. I know how this go. I know how Jesus is. You can be in church 80 years and you don't know everything about Jesus. 
You know what I'm saying? So we have to be at a place and not be religious. But begin to allow his spirit, you know, to begin to sit still and to say, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me in worship? What are you trying to tell me as even as I get into prayer? What are you telling me that even as I go to church, what are you telling me? Because, see, when we're living in the spirit realm, you'll understand that God is always talking. The thing is, we're not always listening. Because why do you think the enemy will want to put a lot of things on our mind? Oh, what to cook? Oh, this is what I'm going to wear to work. Oh, this I go home, I got to go clean this. I got to go do this. And see, but we're, the, the enemy will try to make us think that we arrived because at least you came. You came. At least you prayed. Just because you prayed, but you got to understand. But what did the spirit of the living God say to you? Because see, let's go now to verse 10. Romans 10, verse 10. He says, For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and confessing with your mouth that you are saved. So the first thing it is that even in your spirit, you got to understand, you first got to believe in your heart that he is God. That regardless of what I'm going through, it may seem like it's too hard for me. It seems like it's too hard for everybody in my family. But because I know who he is, I know that he's in me. Yes. He said, and then with confessing it in with your mouth, that you shall be saved. So in other words, this is what we take people through when they want to get saved. But you got to understand, 